life on Earth relies on photosynthesis, and so does the future of our food sources. And with the world's population expected to reach almost 10 billion by 2050, increasing food production is one of the greatest challenges of the 21st century. Supplying enough food for our burgeoning population is putting a huge amount of pressure on our agricultural production systems, particularly in the light of climate change. We have to almost see a doubling in food production. And scientists believe improving photosynthesis is critical to increasing crop yield. Photosynthesis is the process where plants use sunlight to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and together with water and nutrients make all the carbohydrates and proteins that form the basis of all life on Earth. Since 2014, the ARC Centre of Excellence for Translational Photosynthesis has made significant progress towards developing crops with altered pieces in the photosynthetic process that will enhance growth and yield. Scientists from multiple disciplines and centres work on understanding photosynthesis from the molecular level to the field. The main way to improve photosynthesis is to increase the capture of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by the plants, which makes all the sugars and nutrients that we actually consume on Earth and also produces the oxygen we breathe. New research at the centre has found that by increasing the activity of the Rubisco enzyme in crops, photosynthesis can be ramped up. Rubisco is a protein that starts the conversion of carbon dioxide into plant sugars. The holy grail of photosynthetic improvement is to make the enzyme Rubisco work better. And it's relatively inefficient because it can't distinguish between carbon dioxide and oxygen in the atmosphere. Photosynthesis takes place in chloroplasts, which are structures found in the cells of leaves in plants and also in algae. Chloroplasts capture the energy in sunlight to produce oxygen from water and make sugar from carbon dioxide. Some plants, like maize and sorghum, which are called C4 plants, are more efficient at photosynthesis, and they are among the world's most important food and biofuel crops of the future. They have a particular leaf structure which is suited for hot and dry environment. They use less water and they are more tolerant of high temperatures. The centre's research covers a variety of crops and conditions to explore multiple ways to improve photosynthesis. By using hyperspectral imaging, scientists are able to identify what's happening inside the cells of a leaf to find ways to improve photosynthesis. They've also researched what triggers the production of different types of chlorophyll, which is essential for photosynthesis. Chlorophyll is a pigment in chloroplasts that gives plants their green color and absorbs sunlight to capture its energy. Less than 7% of the sunlight that hit a leaf is used actually in photosynthesis by chlorophyll A and B. There are four different types of chlorophyll and they absorb different wavelengths of light and scientists are trying to maximise this process by inserting cyanobacteria genes into crops to improve photosynthesis. And it can absorb light outside of the normal spectrum that plants absorb light. So if we can get plants to absorb light in that near-infrared region, we could theoretically improve yield by 20% straight away. As the earth warms, growing crops to withstand climate change is crucial to our future food supply. And researchers are studying how plants develop in different environmental conditions in a process called phenotyping. Then crop simulation software is used to predict and model outcomes in different conditions to improve yields. We can try to explore uh, which parameters are important for driving yield. And so we can then have confidence to scale out our simulations to broader environments. These discoveries and scientific innovations are critical in ensuring the future of the world's food supply. To make sure that we can secure our food supply for the future, we need continued and consistent funding. We need to be doing the research now because it takes 10 years to breed a new wheat variety. We can't wait till 2050 to get a result.